Hello and welcome to Your Damn Jets. Uh, in this episode, what I want to do is uh, finally go over the events surrounding my diagnosis of PCS lymphoma. Uh, the summary so far, I had visual problems since January 2020. I had the attack on June 5th, 2020. Um, we searched for a vascular cause and did a bunch of liver checks. That all came back clear. Uh, I was treated for MS at the local hospital, which was, in my view, wrong. And Inova, last time, uh, told me when I was discharged, I arranged with Johns Hopkins or Inova to get a, a brain biopsy to diagnose whether it's a lymphoma or not. Um, so they discharged me and I reconnected with Johns Hopkins and told them what Inova told me. Um, and the plan of attack, as I said the last time, we were not going for a brain biopsy very quickly or ver or like as, as the first line of diagnosis. What I, what I did is I talked to Johns Hopkins and I told them what Inova told me and then they start they made a plan of attack so they would have started with a spinal tap and then it would have been followed by uh if the spinal tap came back negative because it's possible with a spinal tap to to diagnose a uh, primary sinus lymphoma but it doesn't always work so if it came back negative they would have done a vitrectomy because i had eye symptoms and the more we, the time was advancing the more people were thinking or the doctors were thinking that my eye symptoms were related to my other problems. So they were talking about doing a, vitre a vitrectomy to try to diagnose the lymphoma. And again, this is a procedure that is not 100%. So if it came back positive, then yes, do you have a lymphoma? But if it came back negative, then you still have to proceed to the brain biopsy. Um, and unfortunately, I mean, I looked at the literature, they, they did talk to me about it also, but I, I read some articles about vitrectomy to diagnose a primary sinus lymphoma, and it's, it's possible to do it in a very small number of cases. I have no idea whether it would have been positive in my case or not, because we actually didn't do it. And what happened is that on November 10th, um, I was in the house and I was looking at the car passing uh, on our driveway, going to the neighbors and I went to the window, I looked and, and then I turned and wanted to go back to sit and I forgot that there was a stool just behind me. I probably stepped over the stool going to the window. I forgot about the stool and when I turned back to return to my seat, I tripped on the stool and I fell. Uh, I, you know, that evening or that day, I just, you know, cleaned up. <laughs> I made a mess when I fell, so I cleaned that up. And then I sat back down and it seemed okay. You know, I was not in great shape, but I felt good enough. But the next day, it just seemed that like my movements and my way of walking was getting harder and harder. And I decided on November 11th to just uh, ask my wife to drive me to the ER of Johns Hopkins to be admitted again. And I had to, when I was at the ER, I, you know, I told them why I came there so because I fell and, and I feel this way or that way. And, but I also pulled uh, quite a bit of uh, names out of my hat. To, I had to tell them, you know, I've been in talk with them uh, to get a brain biopsy to see if it's uh, primary sinus lymphoma. Um, so they admitted me uh, on November 11th. Uh, as I was in the hospital, uh, my, my situation deteriorated. At home, I didn't need a walker to walk, but from a, a little bit after I was admitted to the hospital, I started needing, needing a walker to be able to just go to the bathroom. I couldn't just walk unassisted. I would have fallen on my face. Uh, and eventually they decided to scrap the plans for a vitrectomy and a spinal tap. 
and just go for the brain biopsy. And the brain biopsy was scheduled on November uh, 11th. Um, that's a date that I remember. I don't even I have notes, but I don't even have to look at my notes to remember that date. This was November 11th, 2020. Um, they got me into the operation room. Uh, they talked to me. Um, and one thing I did before, uh, even before going to the to the hospital there, I was at home. And the, one of the, I think the weekend before those days, just just before going to the hospital, I, I had um, usually this. Well, my beard usually is longer than this. I have it short because of COVID. Uh, I want the, the N95 mask that we use to fit well over my face. And ideally, I would be completely shaven, but that's not my style at all. And my wife prefer bearded men. Uh, so I have a beard. Um, but it used to be longer. Uh, and the hair on my head is about the length that is, it usually is. But the before I went to the hospital... I just took my uh, razor and I set it. I just used it straight on my on my skin. Um, it's a hair. It's a hair a clipper. And in American English, I think they call it a clipper. So I just used it straight on my skin to shorten the hair to something very small. Uh, so I was not clean shaven, but it was good enough for the hospital. And the the my thinking was. I don't want them to fight with my hair on top of my head when they do the brain biopsy. And I don't want them, if they need to put something on my face, a mask or anything, I don't want them to fight with my hair. Uh, I want it to fit nicely. So, um, yeah, I cut uh, that all off. So on November 11th, they rolled me into the operation room and they, I, I guess I signed some papers and they told me what they were going to, going to do and they they did it um at that time just before the brain biopsy i mentioned that i was walking with a walker i needed the walker to walk my vision was terrible um i was seeing double so if i looked at the tv my eyes were crossing by themselves and uh, it was also very blurry and i mentioned before that when i w had to use my phone at that time i was most of I was using assistive um, technologies, but the the screen was blurry, and I was just going by memory. Like, okay, the icon for this app is somewhere over there, so I'm tapping, and I could recognize general shapes. So if it was like a green icon, I could see the green. But so I, I was going by you know the general shape of the icon, and like if I needed to call my wife, it's like the which face in the lot looks more like my wife uh so yeah before that was before the i started treatment so before before the biopsy i was like that after the biopsy it was also like that for a little bit of time um and uh so they did the biopsy and uh, then they told me i don't remember how long it took but they told me yeah you have a primary sinus lymphoma um and I have to say that the diagnosis, you know, people don't want to, to hear that they have cancer. Um, and I don't wish the, this diagnosis on anybody. But at that point in my life, I was in such trouble physically. Like, I, I couldn't walk without a walker. I, I, my vision was shit. Um, I was in so much trouble. And nobody could pinpoint exactly what it was. That when they they came back and they said, "You have a primary CNS lymphoma." For me, it was a relief. Um, because as far as I was concerned, then we had a plan of attack to deal with it. Um, So I woke up from the surgery. I had a catheter. Um, you know, if you go into some, I don't remember. I don't know how to decide which surgeries need catheters and which don't. But I had basically a tube going up my urethra to allow me to pee in a in a bottle. Um, and uh, yeah, after that, I progressively got a little, you know, 
they were not treating me yet and they had the diagnosis but I needed I was in neurology for the diagnosis and for treatment I needed to go to oncology um, so they had to have a bed available for me and it took a little bit of time it's only on I got the biopsy on November 17th and on November, November 21st uh, they were able to find a place for me uh, in oncology so at the time I was rolled from neurology to oncology I was still admitted at the hospital um, and uh, I started chemo on the 21st and it was uh, basically the base uh, base product for me was methotrexate which is not the usual thing they use for people with lymphomas but because I have a PCNS lymphoma they use they use that product that's the right thing to to do for people with PCNS lymphoma um, so what did I learn from this experience and I think I'm gonna I'm actually rethinking my episodes as I'm talking to you uh, one thing you need to know is untreated PCNS lymphoma if you don't do anything at all the person has months to live and I had been with that thing for months so I think I was getting to the point where uh, the tumor was co going to cause damage into my brain and one of the thing I learned afterwards actually with the brain biopsy because they scrapped the vitrectomy and the spinal tap and they decided to go for the brain biopsy directly and one thing that I learned is that my tumor had grown quite a bit uh, enough that at first they were saying well we don't the brain biopsy might be dangerous uh, we're going to have to go deep and we might miss it and then and, 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 and I asked the surgeon after the brain uh, biopsy how you know was it hard was it easy he said oh it was very easy <laughs> but it's because the tumor had grown uh, so uh, yeah I think I was getting to the point where I was going to get permanent damage or or die from this thing because people normally who have uh, primary sinus lymphoma that is untreated only have months to live uh, so that and here's here's the big uh, you know million dollar prize is that if I had not gotten that second opinion at Johns Hopkins that Dr. Bragava told me you do not have multiple sclerosis where would I be um, to me that was the second opinion was key uh, to get me into good shape um, where you know they were able to diagnose what the problem that I had um, of course at first it went into a vascular direction which was a, de a dead end but but actually I did benefit from that because they tested me in all kinds of ways and found no problem so now I know <laughs> that at least the, the the arteries in my brain and the veins are are doing fine <laughs> uh, and I don't have arrhythmia yay uh, so yeah so get get that second opinion again uh, it can save your life um, and I, I think uh, it did save my life in this case um, so yeah they rolled me from neurology to oncology on the 21st and so in the next episode I'm going over the, the start of my chemo um, and what my chemo consisted of and uh, all those details but for now, I'm going to say uh, goodbye and uh, see you next episode.